Um, hi everyone, um, and this is Nicholas again with my uh, second video. And in this video, I'm gonna discuss uh, the analysis of, uh, of linear beams, okay? Um, for those who attended yesterday, we looked at the analysis of trusses, and um, today we're gonna look at the analysis of beams. Um, let me just share my slides with you. Okay, if you look at this, uh, uh, I say in my slides, uh, you know, the procedure for analysis of beams is pretty much similar. Um, uh, to, to, to that of trusses. Um, the only difference here is that we've got, um, basically, uh, we've got uniformly distributed loads. Um, uh, I mean, sorry, we've got line loads and um, we've also got some point loads as well. But everything else is pretty much the same as what you had for trusses. So I'll just share with you uh, the, the example that I'm going to use in this, in this tutorial or, or lesson. Um, look at your class notes. Um, this is uh, the example that we're going to use. So it says here, yeah, use the frame analysis modium procon to determine the shear force, bending moment diagrams and deflected di deflection diagrams uh, for the simply supported beam shown here. And uh, the, the, the material size is uh, a, a nice section of uh, 533 times 210 times 101. Okay, and uh, it says, you know, you need to clearly show the bending moment diagrams, deflected uh, deflection values at points numbered one, two, three, <clears throat> four, five, and six, excuse me. Um, so basically this is our, you know, our problem. Okay, uh, if I share uh, my analysis, frame analysis, for those of you who attended, uh, 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 who attended my, uh, my, uh, my, my lesson, I'll just take you back, just to rewind. Uh, if you go to frame analysis, you open Procon, then you, once you click on, uh, when you start, when you start Procon, you click on the analysis tab, click on frame analysis, and then uh, this is what you will see when you click on frame analysis. This is what you see. And again, you say, you go to input, enter your nodes. This is a linear beam, and I've done all the input. You choose an origin. Uh, you can zoom your beam. As you can see, I've done the, the input already, just to you know make this video shorter. Um, I use my coordinates, you know, uh, uh, to, to define, you know, I, I use my node numbers and and, uh, and coordinates to define, you know, the, the different points on that beam. Okay. Um, as you go along in your in, in your in your in your career, you realize that the more finite element beams that you have in in a, in a particular beam, the more accurate your results are. But at this stage, you know, for the uh, for beginners, you know, it, it's not doesn't matter. Uh, I normally assign. Uh, nodes at particular points you know where you got supports where you got um i'll share my i'll share my my diagram with you um so basically i assign nodes as you look at this diagram i assign node numbers at points of change in loading uh, i assign node numbers at points where you've got supports you know uh, 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 basically yeah but as you go along you'll see that the more uh nodes you have on a beam the more accurate your results are the more finite elements you have in a beam the more you know the better your result okay now going back to our frame analysis um as you see i've already done the input of the of the node numbering and the coordinates you know as you see we have no y because this is a linear beam there's no y coordinate um so like we did yesterday after that entering the node numbers you go to the beams uh and now here we want to define our beam element using the node numbers and if you look at our question uh we only have one beam element type, which was that I beam you know, that, was that, that was described. Therefore, uh, we only need to describe one beam element. So it's uh, using our node numbers. So we've got node number one to two to three to four to five to six. That's our beam element definition. And let's give it a beam name. I'll call it BM. If I'm using a part test, I'll call it BM, and that's our section name. Um, like I said in the previous tutorial. Uh, you can you know release you can you know you can you can apply end releases at you know, at the beginning and the end of an, of a beam but uh, in this case we you know we, we, we don't have to do that um because we've got a linear beam and there's a moment transfer you know in all, all along the whole beam okay um so you will go to beam sections uh oh yeah, sorry, these are all beam sections let me delete this this is a new problem uh and as i said you just click on the section name you know click on the drop down here and then you know all the beam uh the beam names will come up so as, as you can see i've got bm 
That's what I described uh, uh, as a section name for that beam. Uh, now uh, we need to define the beam section designation, which is basically referring to the material type. You know, what kind of material is this? And as you say, as we saw in our problem, let me just take you back quickly. Uh, where's our problem? There you go. Uh, the section type is a is a, is an I beam of that size, 533 times 210 and 101. Okay, note that down. Um, let me take you back to the frame analysis. So I would say, we said we click, that's the section name, that beam section designation box, click in that box, and then click on sections, and then look for that I beam. Um, there you go. So now you realize we have two I beams. We've got I beam web vertical and I beam web horizontal. Obviously, you'd like your, depending on the, on how the beam, the transfer of, um, of loading is, we, you, you know, you like your, your deeper, uh, your deeper uh, Y side of the beam, you know, to be vertical. So you, basically you, you, you work with the web vertical. Okay, and the section is 533 by 210 by 101. There you go. That's our beam element. I mean, that's our section designation. Uh, next thing is we go to our supports. We've got a support. Let's go back to our problem where we have supports. Okay, well, we've got supports on node number one and node number four. Okay, um, excuse me. We've got a, uh, a pin on node number one and a roller on node number four. Um, Okay, let's go back to our frame analysis. We've got a pin uh, on node number one and a roller on node number four. Okay, and like I said, uh, Procon, uh, in Procon, we specify uh, resistance to movement uh, uh, using uh, uppercase letters, you know? So if you wanna specify move resistance to movement in the X, you use uppercase letter X. Um, if you wanna specify resistance to rotation then you use lowercase letters in this case we've got no rotation and therefore we only have you know uppercase letters and this means that when we do our analysis we're going to get a reactions we're going to get reactions at node number one and node number four okay if we had resistance rotation i would specify small letters and the end result will be a, a moment okay i mean the, 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 the result will be a moment you know um so that's our supports now we need to go to node loads um, I discussed this yesterday. Again, let me delete this. This is old. We need new info for this. And again, the most important case when you come to loading here is uh, to define the load case. Like I, I described yesterday, load case is basically um, you're trying to, to group all the loading on this problem into one, one, you know, one, one group. And, and that's a load case. Like in industry, you, you normally have different types of loads. Load cases, I mean, you've got wind loads, dead loads, and all that stuff. But in this case, it's just, you know, uh, a class example, which we just have you know, a, a, a name, we just assign a name for our load cases. Let's say, let's call it load case D, uh, node number, well, then let's go, let's check our problem again. Uh, let me just share that problem again. There you go. So we got a node load on node number six. Um, as you go along, I'll, I'll explain this, you know, this can also be a beam load, but anyway, uh, I'll, for now let's just take it as a node load and um, on node number six. Uh, so if I go back to my, my Procon, frame analysis, share, you'll, I'll go load case D, node number six. I've got um, a load of um, six kilonewtons. Okay, hold on, what, what was it? Four kilonewtons actually, not six. Let's be sure about that. Yes, four kilonewtons. Okay, go back to frame analysis. So that's in the Y direction, so that's minus four. There you go, you've got that, that loading. Okay, uh, next is uh, beam loads. Okay, now this is the only new thing we're learning today. Again, remember it's the same group of loading, so you keep the same load case. Um, a lot of people make mistakes by writing different load cases here. You know, just know that Procon will be analyzing those you know, load cases separately. So you need to be consistent with the load case. If you want Procon to analyze this, all the group, I mean, the, all the loading on that beam at, at the same time, okay, so now, here with beam loading, all you need to do is define a beam element. So we've got beam one to two, and then you need to describe the direction of the loading. Obviously our loading is in the Y direction. You can type this or you can use the drop down, And, and definitely, I mean, obviously we're working with a UDL, kilonewton per meter, so you need to specify the UDL. So if I go back to my, my problem again, just quickly go back to, so we've got five kilonewtons from one to two, uh, you can note that down. Five kilonewtons from one to two is five. Uh, from two to three is two kilonewtons, and then from five, 
from five to six is three. So that's our, those are our yield, our yield, our line loads. Um, go back to my frame analysis and share that. Uh, so from one to two, we've got a, a, line, a line load of, um, um, of five kilonewton, and that's minus because it's, it's, it's obviously a gravity load. And a lot of people ask me what the difference is between a low and high load. Now, this is if you want to, if you have a triangular load, then you enter um, the upper, the, I mean the 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 loading, the UDL, the line load value at, at, at you know at the, at the at the at the extreme node. But in this case, ours is um, a uniform loading, so it's not triangular. If it were triangular, that's what you'll have, something like that. And you'll see that Procon will will give you a triangular load running from five to ten. But in our case, it's five to five. You know, which doesn't matter. You can just type five in one, or, you know, in the lower node uh, uh, column. Okay. So next beam element is two to three. Node. You know, remember we define our beam elements using node numbers. Okay. Uh, again, we've got a load in the y direction. Obviously, y direction, and the value is two kilonewton per meter. Okay. Next, we've got from five to six in the y direction we've got minus three kilonewton per meter okay so th that's our loading as you can see like i told you yesterday you can use your mouse to zoom this you can use this zoom command you can orbit uh, you can zoom extends you can zoom window you can you can you know you can zoom all uh, like that so that's our beam loading um so basically that's 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 pretty much we've done the loading we've done the beam loading we've got the nodal load uh, on node number six. Number six. Uh, next is uh, we go to analysis because we've done the support, we've done the loading. So let's go to analysis and analyze our beam. Okay, there you go with our beam. Start analysis. There you go. Our analysis is done. Remember, do not forget to check your settings. Um, make sure that you're working on XY plane. And um, the other thing you need to check is. Um, in your input, the general tab, um, just make sure that you, you know whether you're including soft weight of this beam or not. In this case, if I look at this, uh, in this case, we are, we, we, you know, we chose to add on weight to load case D. That means that the result we're getting here includes soft weight, okay? So we are adding the own weight of this beam to load case D. Okay, remember load case D, you know, comprises all the loading that we, we have for this problem. So it means that the, the, the soft weight of this beam is also included. If I look at our results, okay, analysis, let's go back to analysis. Um, okay, let's reset and do, redo our analysis. Start analysis. Okay, there you go with our analysis. Now let's go to view output. Again, you look at your deflected shape. Remember in this, uh, in this uh, question, if I take you back to the problem, you requested to draw a deflected shape. Um, deflection diagrams as well. Okay, so uh, take you back to the frame analysis. Um, as you can see, that's our deflected shape. Now you can magnify this. You can make this choose a bigger magnification so that you you get a bigger, a, a, you know, you get um, a clearer picture of of what the deflection sh deflected shape looks like. So you can sketch this for those ones who are doing this as an assignment. Sketch this deflected shape and then move your cursor. You know. Node number two, you know, you'll be able to read off the deflection at each node. As you can see, node number, the biggest deflection is node number six, and uh, that's uh, 1.31 in the in the y direction. Um, excuse me. Um, that's the deflected shape diagram. Next, you go to the reactions. Um, there you go with our reactions. Obviously, we had um, uh, the pin support here, so we expect a vertical and horizontal reaction. We don't have a horizontal reaction, um, a horizontal reaction at this point, although we expect one, it's zero because uh, we don't have a horizontal force. Therefore, there's no, therefore the horizontal reaction is zero. We had a roller support here, so therefore you have only, you know, a reaction in the y direction. Because remember, a roller support resists movement in the y direction. So when there's resistance movement in the y direction, the effect of that resistance is a reaction, okay? Uh, then we go to our beam forces. Now this is something new. Uh, yesterday, I mean, I was, I had a, I, I, I did a video of, of trusses, and I said in trusses, uh, the most important uh, force type was the axial stresses. You know, the compression and tension. Now, um, in this beam element, 
um, as you can see, the axial forces are zero. Obviously, like we said yesterday, axial forces are forces acting to the parallel member, uh, parallel to the member axis. You know, there's no horizontal forces here, and therefore that's why we have no axial forces. Okay, so I need to go to the moment, x moment. You can make this um, magnify this so that it's clearer. So that's your bending moment diagram. Okay, force type moments. That's your bending moment diagram. Uh, that's what you would sketch. Uh, then you look at your shear force diagram. There you go with your shear force diagram. That's pretty much it. So you just have to sketch this and uh, write down the values at each point. Okay, um, I promise to tell you about beam envelopes. Now, beam envelopes is basically trying to uh, look at this beam at particular points and you know, look at that you know, more clearly at particular points. Uh, sometimes you're required to draw, uh, to, I mean, to indicate the point of contraflexure. Um, so you'd use you know, the beam envelopes to be able to you know, look at this beam at, so at particular points, I mean, particular you know, parts of the beam. So I can specify a beam element. I can say I want to look at beam one to two to three or I could you know and then I need to select the load case and then say okay so basically Procon you know can show me the dimensions you know as, as I move my cursor I can be able to see the distances at the bottom there uh, let me move this video away can I or not okay, yes there you go um, you can see the axial load the maximum axial load is zero obviously there's no axial load here then I go to moments I can look at the moments from um, uh, for this beam from node one to uh, up until three as you can, sorry, this is from one to two. Okay, and then you have your moments, I mean, shear force diagram. Uh, that's the shear force diagram from one to two. You can also choose uh, envelope, uh, let's envelope options. You can choose to look at, okay, this was an, an error, it's supposed to be to three. You can also choose to look at um, the whole beam, you know, number five, number six. Select the load case, say okay. As you can see, you can be able to see, you know, the same results. But with more accuracy, you know, you can be able to, you know, pinpoint what pinpoint where this point is, where the bending moment diagram, you know, cast the x-axis. Um, uh, so I can it cast the x-axis at about 3.2, you know, and and you can also be able, you can see the maximum bending moment and, and things like that. Um, so basically, uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, let me see what else. Oh yeah, the other thing is probably you need to know, uh, go back to your input, and then be able to change, because that is a result with the load case. Some people are interested in a checking their classwork, you know, against the Procon result. So in your classwork, you normally don't have, don't include the self-weight of, of, of these members. Uh, you normally work with the uh, anal analyzing beams with the uh, external loading. So basically, if you want to check your classwork, you have to come and take off the self-weight. So you say, do not add on weight. Okay, do not add on weight. And then you go back to your analysis and do your start analysis. Okay. Start analysis and then you go to your view output. Uh, same things, deflected shape. Uh, I'm going to start asking people to, you know, calculate the deflection and compare it with this, with the, the proper result. So you can magnify this to make it, you know, to, to show you, to give you an indication of how the deflected shape looks like. And then you get look at your reactions. I expect them to be smaller because now you don't have self weight. Obviously, remember we had 27 here, and I, I you know you can see that they are smaller. Um, reactions because we are not including the soft weight here. Beam forces. I'm interested. In, okay, that's a shear force diagram without soft weight. That's a uh, bend moment diagram. So these are the results you're supposed to get when you do a hand calc while ignoring soft weight. And uh, normally I, I encourage students when you do your tutorials, you need to give me a result that has that ignores soft weight, um, that, that 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 includes soft weight and a check. And um, and I normally ask students to check. You know, one of these values, so the bending moment diagram at this point, with a hand calc, you know, against the Procon result without soft weight. And if you get the same, then you know, you pretty much know your your results are correct. Uh, it's always good to check your results, you know, because uh, garbage in in the software is garbage out. Um, what else do you want to know? Do I need to tell you about this? That's pretty much it for this. So that's the analysis of beams, and um, uh, I hope you you understood how to do this. It's pretty simple, pretty much similar to, 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 to the analysis of, um, of, of trusses. And um, uh, my next uh, video will be explaining to you how to determine the section properties of, um, of polygons. Um, thanks for watching. See you next time.